For most families, moving to the other side of the world is a once-in-a-lifetime decision. But what if you've done it before, only for things to end in disaster? Would you be willing to risk everything and make the move all over again? Last time the Wallaces tried to emigrate, it almost destroyed the family. We came back, we were arguing a lot, and um, I decided to divorce Ben. <laughs> And making a new start down under will mean facing some tough memories. I'm just hoping that things are going to be different. Ben hopefully has grown up a little bit more. I want to be by the beach and I want to go surfing when I can, basically. Not when I'm allowed to. With so much at stake, will it be the biggest gamble of their lives? I don't want anything to go wrong this time. Come on. Australia's sunny climate and miles of beautiful coastline have long been a draw for Brits looking for a new start abroad. For most families, emigrating is a once-in-a-lifetime event, but sometimes the promise of a better life is so strong that it can tempt you to risk everything for another bite of the cherry. The Wallaces hope Australia will give them the family life they dream of. Over the next week, they'll experience the reality of living down under before they make their final choice, whether to stay in the UK or to make the move for good. Their journey begins with a long haul across three continents, covering 10,000 miles before arriving in Sydney. Despite the long trip, the family are feeling positive about what's to come. The flight was lovely. We're here now, we're just waiting to see what's going to happen now for the rest of the week and be looking forward to it. Um, yeah, just see what Sydney has to offer and hopefully the weather will stay dry. <laughs> They've arrived in the Australian winter, but they'll be hoping it's an improvement on the weather at home. Back in the UK, the Wallaces live in Newport in South Wales. Amanda and Ben recently celebrated their marriage for the second time. <laughs> Today means the world to me. I'm married to Ben again <laughs> and we're a proper family again. Yeah, that's a fresh start basically. You know, mm. Everything's gone now that's in the past and just look to the future instead. Life for the Wallaces hasn't always been this rosy. In 2005, they emigrated to New Zealand with their daughters, Amy and Libby, in search of a better family life. However, Down Under didn't live up to their expectations. Obviously, when we emigrated to New Zealand, the weather, the climate was similar to the UK. It wasn't as hot as I expected it to be. It was fairly chilly. We had landslides and floods while we were there. And their ideas of life in New Zealand seemed to be at odds with each other. I went to work while we were I in didn't. New Zealand and Ben decided it was a surfing holiday. No, I didn't. I, I struggled to get work, basically. You did not. I did. There it was wasn't plenty, the easiest. There it was wasn't. loads of work. I, you just preferred to I do other things. I beg to differ on that. They might not agree how it all happened, but in 2005, after just a few months, the Wallaces returned to the UK, where matters got even worse. So we came back, you know, tried to give it another go. We were arguing a lot and um, I decided to divorce Ben. <laughs> After all their ups and downs, the Wallaces are back together as a family and Ben and Amanda's thoughts have once again turned to moving down under. Beach. What we thought we were coming back to... We didn't come back it to. It hadn't, you know, Newport's not changed for the better, it's, it's got, got worse. worse. And the, the economic climate's got worse, isn't it? And they've had their fill of the great British weather. I'm fed up of cold, miserable weather. It's just not very nice. They're also hoping Australia could give Amy and Libby a brighter future. All we want to do is give the best we can for them, basically. And if you can't do that for your children, then there's nothing you can do, really, is there? No one will do anything for them. And the Aussie surf is a big pull for Ben and the girls. 
because of the warmth and temperature in the water in Australia, then I'll be able to go and surf a lot more. I want to be by the beach and I want to go surfing when I can, basically. Not when I'm allowed to. However, this time they're staying realistic about what life might be like. We're not expecting the grass to be greener. We are expecting to work hard over there and we're not expecting to have a big, huge house because we haven't got a big, huge house here. With so much riding on the week, the Wallaces' experience in the past could have a big impact on their future. Will we work out together, you know? Will we end up divorcing again? You never know. You can't foresee what the future holds. You've got to look, you know, at the now and at the moment in time, that is the way forward. Um, you know, who knows what's around the corner. So will the past help them make the right choices this time around, or could they be heading for stormy waters all over again? Home for the week is Sydney, Australia's largest and most famous city. With its stunning scenery and fast pace of life, it's a magnet for immigrants from all around the world. But can it deliver the Wallaces the new start they hope for? They're spending the week in the suburb of Manly, seven miles drive northeast of Sydney. Ben and Amanda have visited Australia before, but under very different circumstances. I've been out here before. I, I went to Melbourne with the girls and my friend Donna, and Ben came out here um, soon after, in the November time, after we split up with um, another lady, shall we say. So yeah, it was really traumatic for me to be coming here, although it's where Ben wants to be. Um, just because, you know, you always wonder what he was doing here and where he went and that sort of thing. It wasn't part of my life at the time. It's an emotional issue, but one that Ben is confident they can handle. Um, try to support her through as best I can, but hopefully we'll get through all that, like we've got through the last sort of two years, and, and we'll build a life together in Australia. And their search for a new future starts at this two-bedroom cottage. It should give them a good taste of what Australian living can offer. And the sun's out. Oh, this is lovely. Oh, it's warmed up. I love the, the, just the noises out in the garden. Yeah, <laughs> it's and the smells. It's definitely, isn't it? Yeah. Nice blue sky as well. Yeah, it'll be coming out for a barbecue on this. Mm. It's really nice. We really like it, yeah. I thought if we'd be able to afford anything like this. <laughs> Can I go to sleep now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking forward to, you know, to see as a new start and maybe some better opportunities. I don't know until I take each day as it comes and then see what happens, basically. You don't have anxieties, do you, Ben? Yeah, I tend not to get anxious or worry about things, really. I, you know, take it all in my stride and just get on with it, basically. I don't Life tend the to plan way. things and... <laughs> no. Is I to do everything one Hence, day at a time. no haircut or shave. <laughs> yeah. So we've got to find a barber as well. <laughs> Barbers and something to give me a shave. <laughs> She's gone. Finding a warm bed and a barber might be top of the list right now, but the family know there's some huge decisions ahead of them. The key to the Wallaces making the move is finding the right house in the right location. But living in one of the most expensive cities in the world won't come cheap. So could they be facing a strain on their wallets? Back in the UK, the Wallaces live in Amanda's three-bedroom house in Newport in South Wales. Ben also has a two-bedroom house that he rents out. For the move to work, finding the right home in Australia would be a big step forward. Well, we, don't we, want want that. we don't want yeah. a big house with a swimming pool. I'd rather a small house close to the beach. Mm. Obviously, we're going to have to have three bedrooms. Well, I would say four for people visiting. <laughs> OK, ideally four bedrooms, but, you know, three would suffice as long as we've all got... Mm. The girls have got their own bedrooms. They'll finance the move by selling both properties, if they can agree on what they want, which could give them a total budget of £270,000. Today, we're going to give them a taste of the Sydney property market. 
we'll show them three options based upon what they want from their ideal home, what they can afford and the real price of property down under. After seeing at first hand what's on offer, we'll reveal to the family just how much each house costs. Having visited before, Amanda and Ben have some idea about Aussie houses, but prices and exchange rates have changed a great deal in recent years, so could they be in for a few surprises? The first property is in Brookvale, just a few minutes drive north of Manly and close to surfing beaches. To try and keep costs down, it's a new two-bedroom apartment, but will it get things off to a good start? Quite secluded. Look. Oh, this is nice. Nice size kitchen. Mm. Room's not too bad, it's quite... Yeah, but this would be your living room and dining, dining room, room, wouldn't it? Not too bad, though. It's bigger than I thought it'd be. Who's mm. bedroom is this? Room, Yours. Oh. Nice nice walk-in wardrobe, it's all for me. Right, so this would be... Second bedroom. So it's two so it's bedrooms. It's not ideal, but... Like I said, I suppose... It is nice. So you might even have to share a double bed. At the push. Mm. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think? Well, I like it, but it's a mess with Yes. Yeah. To be shown so with your sister. Not. It's looking as if this apartment is simply too small for their needs. Can the outside change their minds? First impressions. This yeah, looks really nice. good, yeah. Seems Ben doesn't have to do any, any work? DIY at all. <laughs> Maybe That's a bit of painting. Not. No, you wouldn't paint, would you? Yeah. Nothing wrong with Magnolia. <laughs> so, with a very quick tour over, the girls hang out on the terrace while Amanda and Ben find out the price. How will a cheaper option fit with their £270,000 budget? What do you think? Do you think it's something that we can afford? I don't know, I wouldn't hazard a guess on a two-bedroom apartment because you've not looked at anything like no. that. So... Shall we have a look? Go on then. <laughs> Here it goes. Oh! oh £267,000. Judging by those gasps, it looks as if they're encouraged by the price, if not the space on offer. If we could find a three-bedroom, we might sort of... be able to afford... Yeah. yeah, so really, really impressed. I'm quite shocked. Yeah. <laughs> shocked that. The second stop is another new apartment. Set further inland in the French's forest area, it should show the Wallaces what they can get if they're willing to live further from the beach. Could this modern Aussie pad be right for them? Wow. I like that. That's different, isn't it? Mm. Very modern. Very, very I modern. Like the I like the cheese. I like the floor. The island. Mm. Mm. Very That's nice. Really rich freezer that goes. Dish, that dish dishwasher. Oh, yeah. Oh. I mean, it's more modern than we've ever had before, but it's nice, yeah, it's really it's, nice. Yeah, we've it's never had modern like this, have we? It's your taste, is it? Is it? <laughs> you like your dreams? Yes. So, Amy approves, but will just two bedrooms keep everyone else happy? Um, this is nice. It's quite small, isn't it? Yeah. You'd probably get two singles in, yeah? Yeah, but it's not Gosh. a very big space for them. This now, this is lovely. It's it nice, is nice, it? but it is just two bedrooms. If we didn't have children, this would be the ideal. Lovely. But we've got to think of you as well, haven't we? Mm. Yeah. Once again, things are looking a little cramped, but there is plenty of room out on the terrace. That's a nice view. Oh, this is big. Oh, God. This is lovely. Oh, wow, that's a big balcony. This would definitely suit me. I mean, I there is no one. garden again, but you don't have to mow lawns if there's no garden. Despite the size, this apartment looks the part. But will it be more or less affordable than the first? I think this is going to be more expensive than the last one. Yeah? It's slightly bigger. A lot bigger. It's further out. Yeah, it's further from the beach. But it's it's, the finish is a lot nicer than the other quality. one. So. Still so, two bedrooms, though. And it's though. still only two bedrooms. Ready? So, let's see. Oh, Dear me, yeah. 386,000. We might have to just think about moving away further from the beach, even though this is further than the last one. one yeah. It might have to be that that's what we compromise on. Well, that's, you know. We can't afford. If you've got to compromise, we've got to compromise. If, you, if we want to come to Australia, then we 
Yeah. I have to compromise a lot more than mm. perhaps we thought we would have. You'll have to compromise. Yeah, I'll have to compromise more. <laughs> and then. go surfing there. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> as long as I'm with you and the girls. Oh. <laughs> anyway, I'll be fine. Oh, that's very noble of Ben. But could he really give up his dream of a surfer lifestyle? With the second property well over budget, everything rests on the Wallace's final stop. Getting the right location and size is clearly going to be tough in Sydney, and one option may be an Aussie doer-upper, so we're ending the search close to the beach in Manly North. The third property is a traditional weatherboard house and should be big enough for the Wallace's needs. Nice fireplace. Quite nice size, isn't it? Yeah. It's dated and it need work, but... Not a lot of work, it's, it's only so cosmetic. This is probably more our type of property than the apartments we've yeah. looked at, really. Oh, they've got two single beds, what do you reckon? Yeah. So it's yeah. probably just two, two bedrooms, bedrooms maybe. Let's see. Is this sort of like a bungalow? It is, it is a bungalow, yeah. yes. It's a promising start, and Ben has a plan to find that all-important extra bedroom. If you made your open plan and moved it that way, you would turn that into a bedroom then. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you could have three bedrooms, because this, you don't need it as a dining room or a study. Can we look at the garden now? Well, we can go out and see what no, wait, there no, is no, there. Right there. Outside, there's a walled garden that should have plenty of space for the family surfboards. We did a full renovation in New Zealand, and it actually probably was in a worse state than this. Yeah. So it's a similar project but in a, hopefully, a better area, even though it's raining at the moment, but... It's doable. Yeah. Well, that's all. Yeah, the all according the to the price. <laughs> Although Ben and Amanda aren't put off by the amount of work needed, another big renovation project wasn't in their plan for the move. So will the price of this house provide answers or more questions? We shall have a look. Go on then, and I'll look in. £450,000! For a doer up or a... You know, well... I suppose on par with other things in Manly themselves, or yeah. Manly Vale, or well, around this area, we knew it would be that sort of price. Disappointed, I thought. That's £200,000 over budget. Is the dream location simply out of reach? Or can they find a silver lining behind all those zeros? Doesn't mean it's over. No. I think we learned our lesson in New Zealand, haven't we? Yeah, not to rush into Nine, And take a step back and give ourselves a bit more time, really. If there's this in, in the centre of Manly, what is there further out? out? It's not the end of it yet. No. Not end of your dream yet, no. is it? No. To live by the beach. Yeah. It's been an eye-opening experience for the Wallaces. The first apartment was too small and soon ruled out. The second had the looks, but it came with a big price tag. And the last was ideally placed, but wildly over budget. So which way will they vote on houses in Australia? Oh, yeah! okay. I'm in the middle. <laughs> Why? Because the apartments and house that we've seen today don't suit our needs. Agree with you. That's and are far middle. too expensive in this area. I've gone half and half because of obviously we won't be able to afford living in Manly, but there is other areas in on the east coast and going up towards Brisbane as well that we could look at and research and look to live there maybe. And it's cold in Manly. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a less than warm welcome back down under for the Wallaces. But if they're ready to compromise on a housing location, a new start could still be within reach. Sydney's sky-high prices have come as a real shock to the Wallaces and left their Aussie dream high in the air. But with any life in Sydney being an expensive one, everything depends on Ben and Amanda finding good work opportunities. In the UK, Amanda works in nurse recruitment and earns £27,000 a year. But she wants to get back to a nursing role in Australia. 
I'm looking to get more clinically um, involved again in the role of a nurse, um, either practice nursing, which I've done in this country, or occupational health nursing, which I've done in this country as well. I don't particularly want to have to work full time over in Australia. Um, that's going to be left to Ben. <laughs> but Ben is a little more open about what he'd like to do. I'd, I'd be looking to do anything, basically. As long as I had an income, I, I, I'm not particularly worried. So anything sort of a surveying, facilities management, asset management type job, you know, I'll be looking at in those areas. Today, both Amanda and Ben are going to have a taste of what it might be like to work in Australia. Amanda is first to set off. She's keen not to repeat the mistakes of their last experience down under. I worked four nights a week in a maternity hospital and it was like an hour each way for me to get to work and Ben wasn't really that bothered in finding a job so that's where things went wrong. Um, I, I'm just hoping that things are going to be different. Ben is going to hopefully be more motivated and he hopefully has grown up a little bit more in the last five, six years to realise that to actually get this sort of lifestyle you have got to work. You know, we're coming out here for the children, not just for him to surf, really. As the main visa applicant, we've arranged for her to spend the morning on a maternity ward. Unit manager Isabel Cullen Romqvist will show her the ropes. So you want to have a look around? Yes, please. Cool. <laughs> Come on, let's go. So this is the postnatal ward. We've got 20 beds, 12 rooms. Uh, some rooms are single rooms. So I think there is four or five single rooms, mm -hmm. and the rest are two beds in each room. Okay. This is room three, so this mm -hmm. is one of the single rooms. We try not to double up yeah. women if we, if we have to. So if we're really busy, we'll be double up. Only single rooms in the UK are for um, high-risk patients. All right. So obviously they come back here postnatally. Where do they go to deliver? Have you got yeah. a delivery suite? Yes, absolutely. Or? We've got a birthing unit. Mm -hmm. Why don't we go and have a look there? Okay. Okay, Lovely. come with me. Thank you. While Amanda continues her tour, Ben is exploring his work options. It was really important to find work while I'm in Australia, um, just to bring a living into the family and, and look after the girls, give them the lifestyle that they want. It took me such a long time to find work in New Zealand. I sort of went there with the wrong attitude, really. That did sort of grind on Amanda, because she was working from day one from being there. So, yeah, it was a big issue. And I wouldn't want that to happen again. I, I would like to find work before I come out this time. For Ben, an ideal job would be running a surf shop. To find out whether it could be a practical option, he's spending the morning at Manly Beach. Store manager Gerard McCallum gives him the lowdown on the business. Hey, how are you? Hi, Ben. Gerard. Hi, nice Nick. What can you tell me about the business then? What we do here, a few different sides of the shop. You got new boards, second hand yeah. boards, oh, we do rentals, repairs, wetsuits. The main thing is just finding the right board for the right person, yeah. working out the correct volume for their weight. And it's, it's kind of challenging because a lot of people think they're a lot better than they are, and so yeah. it's hard to match up the right board. Yeah. Ben loves the surf talk, but he's also keen to get down to the serious business. So the big cringe question is, what, what sort of salary would you be looking at? Uh, you'd be looking around 40 grand a year, so it's about 800 a week before tax. Right, okay. You do have to put in quite a lot of hours being retail, but definitely you're going to have to put in some weekend hours because that's when everyone else isn't working. Yeah, that's what, I suppose that would be your, your, your busiest travel. day, wouldn't it? A Saturday and a Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great for that, Jared. Thanks. No worries. Good. Really important. Yeah, thanks. Nice to meet you. Right, nice to meet you. See you again. See you, mate. Right. What a place to work. Across the road and on a beach, into the water. That would be a, a dream for any surfer, I suppose. 40,000 Australian dollars would, you know, it's not that far off what we're earning in the UK. So it, it could possibly sustain us for a, for a while. So I think it'd be more of a stopgap sort of job for me whilst looking for something that I would feel I'd be more suited to, basically. It looks as if the dream job isn't going to be realistic, but he's been happy with his choice. Since coming back from New Zealand, I think I've, I've probably grown up a lot more and I you know, take things a lot more serious than I did before, especially you know, family-wise, because I haven't mean, gone on since the return from New Zealand. You know, it's made you realise that you know, family is the main thing, basically. That's great news for Amanda. Back on the ward, she's also getting down to business matters. What's the salary like over here? Roughly ninety thousand oh dollars. Gosh, uh, a year. Yeah, it's uh, a lot. It's double what is I'm it on my oh, wow. So that's good. That's mm. good for you. 
It looks like Amanda could earn around £60,000, which is welcome news. But are there any vacancies? We are looking for midwives, uh, part-time and full-time. It's an internal, but I'd say other hospitals, there seem to be a, a shortage oh, on midwives. So, so I'm sure you, you'll, you'll be right. Lovely. Yeah. Have Ben and Amanda been won over by working in Australia, or would they rather stick with the UK? We've had an interesting day today, finding out all sorts of different things about jobs we could do over in Australia, and now it's time to vote. Australia. Why? The money. Yeah. And I could probably work part time what I want to do. Yeah, definitely. Why did you choose? So I just want to live in Australia, so I'll do anything, basically, I think, and find something that's relevant to what I do at the moment. A proper a job. job. <laughs> Not so much work in a surf shop, but doing something I, I know what I'm doing, basically. Before we come out? Before we connect. So we sort it when we get here. Ben's willingness to hang up his wetsuit and find a better paying job is welcome news for Amanda. But with finances looking tight, could the dream of living in Sydney be blinding them from what it might cost? Amanda believes their three-bedroom house in Newport is worth £150,000 and Ben thinks his two-bedroom house is valued at £120,000. They'll need the money from both properties in order to afford a house in Australia. So we've asked two local estate agents for their opinion. Ready? Yeah. Lovely little house. Oh, I might look at my wallpaper. Lovely open plan kitchen, and it looks as if it's been newly refitted as well. Really nice. The living room's rather nice, nice and bright. Uh, reproduction fireplace, polished floors. Uh, lovely. Baby! Well, this is a very pink room. It's a little girl's um, dream, and it's at the same time a really nice size double. Looks tidy there for once. Oh, look at Lots those bedrooms. <laughs> really nice size, and as well, it's got a lovely outlook. Third bedroom. And somebody's obviously getting ready to go to Australia already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, that's not a good look. It's a lovely family property, three bedrooms semi-detached and a really popular residential area. I would expect this property to achieve in the region of £150,000, but if they are looking at a quicker sale, they should expect to achieve approximately £140,000. And having valued the other property, I would expect that to achieve in the region of £115,000, but for a quick sale again, they should be looking at £105,000 to £110,000. Oh, I still make money. I made more money on mine than you. I would recommend for uh, putting this property on the market 155,000, uh, for quick sale 145,000. And the other property that we saw, I would suggest an asking price of 115,000 pounds, and for quick sale uh, at 105,000 pounds. I'm really pleased with my valuation. I was, this was what I was expecting. I wouldn't yeah. expect to make any money on my property. I mean, I would probably have about 50, 55,000. I'd have 20 if it sold for 115. So we'd have about 70, 75, which is about $90,000. Which is well, okay. Not too bad, I Despite Ben's estimate being lower than expected, they're staying positive. But they'll really need to look closely at the cost of living to see if they can afford this move. Right. So this is just shopping list. This is what we would buy on a regular basis. It's on par. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the shopping list. Make so. It a bit that's going to be really bad, I reckon. For the properties, okay, right. So property three was seven hundred thousand. So the repayments of two thousand seven hundred thirty-four pounds. But yeah, you'd have to do it up as well. So you'd so have you'd to, need the money to do it up. Yeah. So we'd actually be one thousand five hundred six pounds so worse off. off per month. If but we lived in Manly. If we lived in Manly. But we could This probably, is worst case scenario and the yeah. most expensive place we could possibly think of. Yeah, and we could we could do it. Yeah. 
So, so yeah, it's not going to put me off. No. Good news, really. Even though their living costs could be much higher in Australia, Ben and Amanda think their incomes will cover the difference. Will they vote with their hearts or with their heads? We've done the reality check, we've done the facts, the figures and the numbers, and now it's time to vote. Australia. Australia. So why? Because I can earn a relatively good wage, so I could go part-time. Yeah. You will hopefully be earning more, more money than, than you would in a, a shop. shop. And so it is doable, and this is what the children want to do. And we both want to do it as well, so... It's about time we've done it, really. Yeah. Put your house on the market, then. It will be. The Wallaces are still persevering, even if it means a rethink on where they want to live. They're prepared to take the risk for the opportunity of a better family lifestyle that they've all dreamt about. Back home, Libby is a budding gymnast and being able to continue her sport in Australia is a must. So the Wallaces are heading down to Manly Gymnastics Club to find out what the facilities could offer her. So you must be Libby. Hi Libby, I'm Natalie. I'm the head women's coach here. After brief introductions, Libby's put through her paces with ex-Chinese national gymnastics coach Xiao Chi Li. She's keen to find out if Libby is good enough to be accepted on the Australian National Gymnastic Programme. Two, three, five steps, three. This is fantastic. It's just, you know, so much better. You can do so much more things and teach so many more children, can't you, with yeah. this sort of facility? One, three, like two. I think, obviously, finding the girls' activities over here is paramount, really, because they want to continue what they're doing in um, the UK. Obviously, they can do this during the week and, obviously, weekends, if it allows, and then we've got the family time, then, Yeah. I can say she's powerful. She jump high. Yes, then you make straight. Open your shoulders. Head up. Yeah, when you go down, arch your head, knee straight. Good girl. All right. Leave arms here. Yeah. I think Libya is good enough in NDP program. So it's Australia national program. And if she come to Australia, I think she will have good future. Ah, that's better. Good girl. And that's great news. So, after working out at the gym, it's time for some fun on one of Sydney's golden beaches. Um, we've come down to Manly Beach for the girls to have a surf lesson, so hopefully they sh might catch some waves, but it's not very good weather today, apparently, for surfing. It's a bit choppy. Oh dear, it looks like the weather has turned a bit British. The conditions today are very much like it is back home. Windy, rainy, cold. So we're used to it anyway. We're acclimatised to this type of weather. But rain is not allowed to stop play. If you're going to learn surfing, you've got to go out in all conditions. So, you know, if you start on a hard day and you have fun on a hard day, you're going to have a great time when it's easier. And there's no time to waste as instructor James gets the girls straight into the water. It was great watching the girls have a go. Both of them stood up, so really proud of them, really. Yeah, it was really good. And James was a really good teacher as well. You know, to get Libby stood up first time, you know, you can't ask for any more than that, really, can you? After a busy day in and out of the water, it's time to vote on lifestyle. Australia! Australia! <laughs> I just love being on the beach anyway, so it's a bonus for me, isn't it? What about you, Liz? Because it's nice gyms. 
Amy? Uh, both the activities we do. I just like this sort of lifestyle. It's quite laid back and I need to be more laid back, so it's a vote for sure. me. Sampling the Aussie lifestyle was a big success, even if it did have a bit of Newport weather thrown in for good measure. But the Wallaces know full well just how far they'd be from everything they have at home. So will saying goodbye to friends and family be easier or harder second time round? So we've prepared some messages from their loved ones in the UK. They think it's okay for the children to watch? Yeah. Libby wants to see Maz and Tina, and he wants to see her running coaches, so yeah, I think that's fine. Hi Ben, Amanda, and Libby and Amy. Hi Amy! Hello, Hello Libby. Libby! Ben and Amanda, I really hope you're making the right decision this time. And for yourselves and for the girls. Well, I should miss Amy and Libby a lot because I meet them twice a week from school and we do make cakes and we do cooking and they tell me all their problems, so I will miss them. We're all really missing you here at Newport Harriers. We've been training really hard. We're going through our sprint and speed sessions. We miss you sprinting down that track, beating everybody. Hi Libby, hope you're having a fantastic time in Australia. Everybody misses you, we send our love. I hope you're keeping up with your flexibility training, <laughs> but not too much. We miss you here. Well, Amy, you know how much Grandma loves you and how much I miss you. And you, Libby, I hope that you will continue with the gymnastics and really do well. Eat your food. Yeah. yeah. We both will miss you very, very much indeed. I don't want anything to go wrong this time, if at all possible. And um, that you're all a one big happy family. I hope things will go well for all of you. Always. Come on. I'm okay. Is it because of Grandma crying? Yeah, you've probably never seen Grandma upset, have you? We're going to see them soon, anyway. It was quite hard, really, watching that. Especially my mother. I knew she would be, you know, upset. Um, uh, we knew she'd be like it, didn't we? Yeah, I, I knew my mother would be like that. I, I think it was a, a bit of a sort of a shock for her as well, because sort of everything's happened so quickly, really, where we are now. Yeah, to get back together and get and married. And get married and then come to Australia, so... It's probably been quite a lot for her to take in as well. I mean, they're um, obviously concerned that we emigrated to New Zealand and we came back. I think they just hope it's, you know, we're doing the right thing for the girls. My mum did look a bit upset. You know, all her grandchildren will live halfway <laughs> around the world. Seeing messages has reminded the Wallaces of just how painful another move could be for them. After all the family have been through, can Australia really offer a future worth the risk? As their week draws to a close, it's time for them to make their final choice. Emotionally, it's been quite draining, really. You know, it's a big risk coming out to Australia, I suppose. I haven't done it before. You'll have to think about everything, really, how it's going to affect all the family, obviously our parents, friends, but ultimately it is about us starting a new life. And obviously we got divorced for several different reasons, and I think we, we're more grown up now, we know what we want. Ben knows he has got responsibilities. We know the pitfalls now. We know what the signs to look out for. Um, where we went wrong the last time basically we went through the ups and the downs and you know i believe our relationship is stronger now ben and amanda may have learned lessons from their first attempt to emigrate but their week in australia has shown them that another move won't come without its own heartaches and headaches so will they choose a new start all over again Australia. 
it is nice weather, isn't it? And it's um, summertime. The outdoor and the opportunities lifestyle. are better. Yeah. Australia is better than I ever thought. It's always been something I've wanted to do. We'll have a better lifestyle and it'll just be better. You know, I've always wanted to come to Australia for the lifestyle and the weather mm. and the surfing. So hey. that's why I voted Australia. And for the family. And for the family to give them opportunities they won't get back in the UK. So when are we booking our tickets to come back? Next trip. <laughs> The Wallaces had to face some tough times in order to make their big decision to move. After being home for a month, I met Amanda and Ben to find out if their plans were still on track. This has been a really important year for you both, well, for the whole family. You got remarried, mm -hmm. yep. so congratulations. I know the girls are delighted. But taking that step to go back out and try it all over again, knowing that it went so badly wrong the first time, were you very nervous about that? I was. I was nervous about where we were going, um, just because I didn't particularly want to go back to Sydney. But um, no, I, you know, I thought it was an opportunity for us to have a look round. And um, Amy's desperate to go, and she was the one that was the worst affected through the divorce and everything. And she was so positive about going. So I think her determination really inspired us all. Driving really, us didn't? all, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. What lessons do you think you learned from going to New Zealand that sort of changed your mind and you were prepared to, to try again this time in Australia? Ben's going to put an effort in this time. <laughs> yeah, I sort of, sort of went with the wrong attitude, I suppose, last time, and this time I know what to expect, so I know what to look for. Yeah, and, and you know you've got to work. Yeah. <laughs> and, and for you, Ben, is that the big difference? Did you feel with New Zealand it was sort of more, perhaps, of a holiday time than yeah, knuckling I, down? I, yeah, and I know... I, I know not to do that this time, I know we've got to get a job for the family, basically. Is that the proviso? <laughs> yeah, is it? basically. Come on, let's, get, let's be honest now. He's going to find full-time work. Yes, yeah. definitely. And he's allowed to serve occasionally at the weekends or in the evenings. And in the mornings, if he and gets a the mornings, earlier. yeah. That sounds like the perfect compromise. Mm. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And it is warmer over there, so I might don a wetsuit and have a look at myself. Yeah. <laughs> how fantastic. So my last question is, how quickly are you going to be returning? Hopefully in the next 12 months to 18 months. Once we'll be living in... The sunshine. Yeah, <laughs> on the and beach. Oh, yeah. And it sounds amazing. Uh, sitting here today, and it's pretty <laughs> cold in Wales today. <laughs> For the Wallace family, the week in Sydney gave them a chance to revisit their dream of a new life down under. Both Ben and Mandy agreed they've learned from their previous experiences and are now keen for a fresh start for the whole family, this time in Australia. It sounds like exciting times ahead for the Wallaces. Flying with the cranes crossing the Himalayas tonight at 8, Earth flight takes to the skies over Asia and Australia. Up next today here on BBC One, more viewings with Homes Under the Hammer. For most families, moving to the other side of the world is a once-in-a-lifetime decision. But what if you've done it before, only for things to end in disaster? Would you be willing to risk everything and make the move all over again? Last time the Wallaces tried to emigrate, it almost destroyed the family. We came back, we were arguing a lot, and um, I decided to divorce Ben. <laughs> And making a new start down under will mean facing some tough memories. I'm just hoping that things are going to be different. Ben hopefully has grown up a little bit more. I want to be by the beach and I want to go surfing when I can, basically. Not when I'm allowed to. With so much at stake, will it be the biggest gamble of their lives? I don't want anything to go wrong this time. Come on.
Australia's sunny climate and miles of beautiful coastline have long been a draw for Brits looking for a new start abroad. For most families, emigrating is a once-in-a-lifetime event, but sometimes the promise of a better life is so strong that it can tempt you to risk everything for another bite of the cherry. The Wallaces hope Australia will give them the family life they dream of. Over the next week, they'll experience the reality of living down under before they make their final choice, whether to stay in the UK or to make the move for good. Their journey begins with a long haul across three continents, covering 10,000 miles before arriving in Sydney. Despite the long trip, the family are feeling positive about what's to come. The flight was lovely. We're here now, we're just waiting to see what's going to happen now for the rest of the week and be looking forward to it. Um, yeah, just see what Sydney has to offer and hopefully the weather will stay dry. <laughs> They've arrived in the Australian winter, but they'll be hoping it's an improvement on the weather at home. Back in the UK, the Wallaces live in Newport in South Wales. Amanda and Ben recently celebrated their marriage for the second time. Today means the world to me. I'm married to Ben again, <laughs> and we're a proper family again. Yeah, it's a fresh start, basically. You know, mm. Everything's gone now that's in the past and just look to the future instead. Life for the Wallaces hasn't always been this rosy. In 2005, they emigrated to New Zealand with their daughters, Amy and Libby, in search of a better family life. However, Down Under didn't live up to their expectations. Obviously, when we emigrated to New Zealand, the weather, the climate was similar to the UK. It wasn't as hot as I expected it to be. It was fairly chilly. We had landslides and floods while we were there. And their ideas of life in New Zealand seemed to be at odds with each other. I went to work while we were I in didn't. New Zealand and Ben decided it was a surfing holiday. No, I didn't. I, I struggled to get work, basically. You did not. I did. There it wasn't was the easiest. There was wasn't. loads of work. I, you just preferred to I do other things. I differ on that. They might not agree how it all happened, but in 2005, after just a few months, the Wallaces returned to the UK, where matters got even worse. So we came back, you know, tried to give it another go. We were arguing a lot, and um, I decided to divorce Ben. <laughs> after all their ups and downs, the Wallaces are back together as a family, and Ben and Amanda's thoughts have once again turned to moving down under. Run, girl! 